Hello. Good evening. I hope you all have had a lovely day. It's been a nice warm day here in Oregon, um, potentially a cold day in Hawaii. That's what, we, that's what we decided it would be. It was really nice here or it was cold in Hawaii. So um, my name is Diane Gibson and I will be uh, conducting the meeting this evening for Bueller and Friends Monday Night Call. Um, or relive. I uh, can well. Let's we'll just we'll just go to my second slide. There we go. Um, I'd like to hear how everybody else is doing. Do we have any business successes or personal successes or hot topics we want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to let. Hey, Lauren, do you know that your video is on? Your video's on, Lauren. We can see you walking around the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine if she's dressed. <laughs> Diane? Yes. I have, this is Debbie. I have, Hi, a, Debbie. New, I have a new slash old slash new distributor who is, is listening i think she said they were going to be listening in on the the call yes right. i am i'm right here hi oh that's awesome well you're on zoom yes i made it good for you this <laughs> this is sarah shields does anybody remember sarah hey sarah welcome hello Fun. i've also well, got my honey dan tate here with me that's gonna be doing the business with me that's awesome. Fun. Oh. Hi, Dan. Really awesome. Hello. Okay. Well, that's awesome, Debbie. I'm very happy for you. Anybody else? Hey, it's Brenda. Hi, Brenda. My green so, here. Oh, I reconnected Hi. with um, someone today, and she was. We were talking, and she was interested in the defense product. And she said, hey, she goes, send me, um, you know, something about it. And I said, I will. And I already did. And then she said, you know, she said, I haven't forgotten about those hemp products either. So we'll be talking soon. So anyway, I'm super excited that I had something new to share. And, and we'll just see where it goes. That sounds great. Congratulations, oh, and Brenda. And P.S. I got mine, and so I've already started taking it, and I'm just super excited. Okay. Have you noticed any any difference? Well, I just started it Saturday, but I'm okay. excited. So the <laughs> less hay. Have you noticed any less hay fever? Um. You know, I was out today, and I have not sneezed today. Wow. So because between yeah. Linda and I, I think we were up to 12 today. <laughs> no, I yes. had none. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Okay. All right, I'll keep track. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, who else? This is Luann. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Well, you're talking about the defense, and I've had it for, oh, maybe about a week now, and I definitely can tell a difference with my sinuses. So uh -huh. that's pretty exciting because I always have a drippy nose and I'm not having a drippy nose. So that's awesome. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about Defense and uh, as well as all the other products that we have. But um, I've also been working with a man and he's so teachable. I love it when people are teachable and they expect the calls and they wait for the calls and telling other people and... Um, they're excited to learn more about Relive, and so I'm, I'm excited about that. That's awesome. Is that the gentleman you were talking about a couple of weeks ago? Um, not sure. Maybe. If I, I don't remember what I said a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just remember you saying that there was a friend that you'd had from high school. Yes. Yes, and he's been... Okay very faithfully taking three shakes a day. And so now he's sharing with other people and I've got several people on the products that are just 
doing phenomenal because they're so teachable, which is really fun. Um, you know, so it's not that I want it more than they do. That's great. That's really awesome. Okay. Does anybody else have anything to share? Hey, it's Terry Bowen. Hi, Terry. Hi. Hey, so it's so funny because I was listening to everybody talk about taking the defense and like what they realized, you know, they've noticed so far. Normally, I think we've been taking it, I think since Friday, somewhere around there. And normally every morning I legit have a sneezing attack. I will sneeze like 10 times in a row. And my, I've always just said, it's just my body waking up because it was a normal thing. And I just realized that that has not been happening since I started taking the defense last week. That's awesome. So I was like, yay. That is awesome. Yeah. I can, I can hardly wait for ours to get here because as, as many of you know, Linda and I, my sister, Linda Wheats and I, we live together. And, um, and since this whole quarantine has, thing has started, we explain our coughs and our sneezes to each other. <laughs> um, and the fact that the, that the sneezes, you know, having taken relive for, for quite a while, um, I don't sneeze as much during the allergy seasons. It doesn't bother me as much, but, uh, but the coughs and the sneezes, it's like, oh no, we, I was, I was just. I was spreading some pepper on my eggs. I'm I'm good. So, all right. If does every is there anything else? No. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and move along. Um. I I don't remember whether or not I mentioned this on the recording. Um. I had a little bit of a challenge getting onto Zoom. Um. And. And my challenge wasn't necessarily getting onto Zoom, it was getting onto the, to the voice part um, so that you could hear me through the computer. And I turned out having to use my phone. Uh, and in so doing, I hit a button and I deleted my, um, my entire presentation tonight, all the slides. So we'll have to do this kind of from memory and, <laughs> and um, kind of uh, without slides, uh, but I, and I hope it, it makes sense. Um, one of the memes that I have seen on Facebook recently says, my hobbies include long scrolls down my phone, talking to my pets, binge watching Netflix, singing in the shower, staying in my pajamas too long, drinking everything but water, ordering stuff online, reading about new diets while eating cake, and making lists of things I will never do. And um, I'll tell you, in my experience, this quarantine has been really challenging. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was a housewife and mother, and I worked full time for a long time, um, 28 years. And <clears throat> these past five weeks, not doing anything has been uh, kind of an eye-opening thing for me. Um, Sorry, I, my kids are grown and they're both married and I have one grandchild and one on the way. And my, um, my daughter-in-law and my first grandbaby live pretty close. And for the first couple of months of this year, I got to go over to their house a couple of times a week and babysit and, you know, kind of worked out around my schedule. And I was just kind of having a blast being a grandma. And then, um, you know, this thing happened and I've seen them once in six weeks and it's been hard um, and figuring out where my life kind of goes from here. It's also been kind of hard. Sorry, I'm so emotional. Uh, but um, just recently I started reading a book by Darren Hardy called The Compounding Effect. <laughs> For the compound effect. And I remember my dad, who, who had so much discipline, would talk to me about the rule of 72. Does anybody know what that is? And 
everybody mute their lines if they're not because you're really sharing some great information and there's some lines that are not muted and if you okay. don't know who you are you guys just go on the participants and you can see if your phone's muted or not but um okay i'm, I'm sorry yeah, thanks for mentioning that quila all right um so the the rule of 72 is is as follows if you um if you deposit an amount of money into some kind of savings institution, um, you're going to be getting interest on that as that amount stays into your account. Um, if you take your interest rate and divide it into 72, that means that uh, it'll be that many years before your initial deposit doubles. So say you deposit $10,000 in a mythical account that pays 8%. Um, in nine years, if you don't touch any of that money, you will have $20,000. And the rule of 72 like, com is, is, is a compounding rule. And, and essentially what it means is that small and steady kind of wins the race in this. Um, I know that a lot of you know this. Um, and I also know that there are some newer distributors on here. And so um, I'm kind of hoping that my presentation this evening will kind of remind you of a few tools that are all already in your tool belt that might have been a little bit neglected. Um, or if, there, if, if this is an absolutely new concept to you, that this will help you. Um, I, know that, I know that everything that I've read in this particular book is not new to me. It's, um, but the practice of it, frankly, is. I have not been very focused on, on very much here for the last couple of years. So, um, <clears throat> to go along with the rule of 72, um, there is, uh, there is a story about a magic penny. Um, and, and it'd be kind of interesting to, to see who, if you were offered $3 million today, or if you were offered a penny today, and tomorrow you were offered two cents, and, and you were offered the doubling of the amounts of money that collect up through 31 days with a penny, starting with a penny, um, would you be more interested in this $3 million today or the magic penny, the one that doubles in value every day? Um, a lot of people would be really, would kind of jump actually at the thought of taking $3 million today. But if you were patient and allowed your penny to double in value every day, at the end of your 31 days, you would have $10,737,418.24, three times, more than three times the $3 million. Um, and compounding actually can work within our lives um, through our decision making through our choices um, through everything else um, let me see here let me go back to my notes um, unfortunately in our society today we kind of have a microwave mentality um, we want everything to happen right now um, you know what happens when you text somebody and they don't answer you for a whole hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just kind of amazing, isn't it? How impatient we become, you know, if our food isn't ready right now, or if, you know, if uh, the photo, if we order uh, photos at Costco and they aren't ready when, when they say they'll be, um, sometimes we get a little bit upset. Um, we really kind of are used to instant results. Um, but we have to promise ourselves that we're going to let that go once and for all. 
especially when it comes to creating the habits and the making the choices that is going to lead to us having a successful business. And not just a successful business, a successful life. This, this compounding effect um, happens throughout our lives with all of the choices that we choose. Um, so a couple of suggestions in the book were to write down a few excuses that you might be clinging to as to why it is your life isn't where it needs to be. Um, you know, as I, was, as I was reading this book, the author was saying that he had an extremely regimented childhood, that he was raised by a single father who was a football coach, and there was love but not a lot of nurturing there. Um, and I thought, well, that's, you know, you can, you can see that. And if that's, that wasn't the way you were brought up, you might think, well, I, I couldn't possibly be as successful as this person because that wasn't my upbringing, or maybe I'm just not smart enough, or I don't have experience, um, selling things to people, or I don't have any kind of an education. We can decide, we have the option to decide to make up in hard work and personal development um, so that we can out-compete anyone, including our old selves. Just because this is the way I've been up to today doesn't mean this is the way that I have to be for the rest of my life. Uh, one of the other suggestions was write down a half a dozen small, seemingly inconsequential steps that you can take every day that uh, will take your life in a completely new and positive direction. Figure out the things that you should be doing. Um, you know, maybe cutting out some TV time or uh, listening to something that's either inspirational or educational 30, 30 minutes a day. Um, stop watching the news. Um, Read a good book. Read 10 pages out of a good book every day. Uh, take a few more steps every day. Be more active. Um, choose a soda water over a soda. Those kinds of things. Um, the next step would be to write down the small and seemingly inconsequential actions that you can stop doing that might be compounding your results downward. Um, spending untold time on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram, um, things that don't lend themselves toward your goals. Figure out what those are. Write those down. Um, then list a few areas, skills, or outcomes where you have been the most successful in the past. Consider whether you could be taking those for granted and are not continuing to improve or therefore in jeopardy and are therefore in jeopardy of having that complacency lead to future failure. Uh, one of the stories that, um, that was told in the book was about a restaurant that opened up not far from the author's home. And he went in there and it was fabulous. He said the hostess was smiley and very friendly, the, the manager would come over and make sure everything was okay. The service was excellent, the food was top notch, and everything was wonderful, and the restaurant became very, very popular. Um, sometimes people would wait for an hour to be seated. Well, the more popular it became, um, the more the staff kind of took it for granted that they were popular and therefore kind of bulletproof and didn't need to continue doing the things that they had been doing. Um, the, the hostess became kind of snooty. The wait staff was disheveled and unkempt. Um, the food was hit or miss. And within 18 months, this wonderful restaurant ended up closing down because um, of the complacency that the staff took as far as, as far as 
the service that they rendered to people. Um, the next thing that that I wanted to talk about were the choices that we make. Um, each choice will kind of project us toward our um, toward our goals or away from our goals. And we are in life where we are today based on the choices that we have made. Um, one of the subheadings in my book says, elephants don't bite. If, you, if you've ever gone outside and been near an elephant, it doesn't bite you. But at the same time, a mosquito might bite you. And uh, what the author was saying with this was that, um, yes, every so often we can see huge mistakes that threaten to implode somebody's life. Um, he mentions a comedian who, who rants racial slurs during a stand-up routine or um, an anti-gay rights senator caught in gay sex in a restroom, those kinds of things, where, you know, where it's like, oh, well, look, yeah, their, their career is over. But n most of us don't have those kinds of choices that we have to make. Um, most of us aren't, aren't in that kind of situation. Um, what happens is, you know, the mosquitoes get us. These little things get us. And, um, and they're the ones that bite us. Um, most, for most of us, it's the frequent, small, and seemingly inconsequential decisions you don't think make any difference at all that is going to project us away from what it is we think we would like to accomplish. Um, in looking at this, one thing that we can do is really take stock of our lives and decide how thankful or how grateful or to recognize the blessings that come into our life. Um, the more we are aware of those types of things, those, those, those precious gifts that we get from, from the people that we live with or from the fact that we're all able to buy groceries, um, you know, and have toilet paper at this point. Um, we should be grateful for those things. The more grateful we are, um, the better choices we're able to make um, because we're not making choices on an emotional level at that point. Um, we just, we understand that we have blessings and, and, and it's easier to make a better choice. Um, one of the other things is to own your own choices at 100%. Um, you know, if you ask somebody, do you take responsibility at 100% for your life? They'll like say yes. But there's a lot of finger pointing and victimhood and blaming and expecting somebody else or the government to solve problems for people. Um, if you've ever blamed traffic for being late or decided that you're in a bad mood because of some and your kid or spouse or coworker did, can you say that you are owning your own, your own choices at 100%? Um, you alone are responsible for what you do, don't do, or how you respond to what's been done to you. No matter who um, is elected, no matter how bad the economy is, um, and, or what anybody said or did or didn't do, you are still 100% in control of you through choosing to be officially liberated from the past, present, and future victimhood. You can hit the jackpot. Um, you have unlimited power to control your own destiny. Um, sometimes people believe that others are just luckier than they are. Um, and, and if you believe that you're simply unlucky, it's actually just another experience Use. The difference between becoming fabulously rich, happy and healthy, or broke, depressed and unhealthy are the choices that you make throughout life. Nothing else will make the difference. Here's the thing about luck. We're all lucky. If you are on the right side of the dirt, have your health and a little food in your cupboard, you're incredibly lucky. Everyone has the opportunity to be, to be lucky. 
because beyond having the basics of health and sustenance, luck simply comes down to a series of choices. Um, and those, you know, those choices are, it, it's been said that the, that the formula for getting lucky is when preparation and opportunity meet. Um, but there are a couple of other pieces to it that I'd like to explore. Preparation, obviously, um, is, being con is consistently improving and preparing yourself your skills, your knowledge, your expertise, your relationships and resources. And that's something that we're encouraged to do in the real estate business. We're encouraged to build relationships. We're encouraged to improve ourselves, our skills and our knowledge. Um, when, you, when you are prepared, you'll have the wherewithal to take advantage of great opportunities as they arise. Um, Attitude is one, he says. Attitude and belief for a mindset. And unfortunately, he says, this is where luck evades most people. Um, luck is all around us. It's simply seeing situations, conversations, and circumstances as fortuitous. You cannot see what you do not look for, and you cannot look for what you don't believe in. Um, opportunity is something wonderful that comes your way. Um, it's possible to make your own luck, but what he's talking about here is something that isn't planned for or or something that comes from a different direction than you expected it's natural occurrence is and oh let's see sorry in the stage of formula luck isn't forced it's a natural occurrence and it often shows up seemingly of its own accord and then action this is where you come in um however your luck was delivered to you it's now your job to act on it. Okay. Um, he says, what, uh, what, this is what separates Richard Branson, the Richard Branson and the Joseph Wallingtons. He said, Joseph who? Exactly. You've never heard of him. That's because he failed to take action on all the lucky things that happened to him. Um, the next part of this that I kind of like to review shortly or quickly is your secret weapon the secret weapon is your scorecard um the author suggests that we select an area of our life that we'd like to improve excuse me um, whether it be finances or health or um fitness which you know is all part of our business um, if it's parenting, if it's relationship, select one area as you start, okay, just one area, and, and write that down, and then take a notebook and a writing utensil and take it with you wherever you go, and anytime you have to make a choice based on, based that, that affects that one area, say it's diet, um, anytime you have to make a choice about food, Write down everything that goes into your mouth, everything, day and night, no exceptions, no failures, no nothing. Just just write everything down and do that for a week. Um, at the end of that week, take a look and see where it is you've made your good choices and where it is you've made your bad choices. And in and and when I say good and bad, it's relative. But but a bad choice would be something that would pull you away from what your what your ultimate goal is. Um, when you've made a not so great choice, what was the circumstance? Were you hungry? Were you tired? Well, if, if it's about food, you were hungry, obviously. Um, were you tired? Who were you with? Were you out with people? Not right now, but you know, in the, in the future. Um, were you, had you just had a fight with maybe your roommate or your spouse? Um, were the kids bugging you? try and figure out what the triggers are that would cause you to make a choice that would pull you away from your ultimate goal. Um, we've all heard about how if a plane takes off from Los Angeles and it's flying to New York um, and it's one degree off, 
it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not going to hit New York. Um, your options will be, you know, if, if everything in navigation was right except that one degree, um, you'll find yourself either in Dover, Delaware, or Albany, New York, 150 miles either side of New York City. Um, this is what compounding can do within our lives. So we want to take a look at the choices that we make and make sure that over a period of time, the choices that you make are going to lead you toward the um, toward you, toward the goals that you wanted to have. Um, some other let's see some other action steps that it was suggested that you take is what area person or circumstances in your life do you struggle with the most start journaling all all of the all the aspects of that situation that you are grateful for keep a record of everything that reinforces and expands your gratitude in that area also look closely at your life and find the areas where you are not taking 100% responsibility for the successes or failures of your present condition. Write down three things that you've done in the past that have really messed things up. Write three, three things uh, you should have done but you didn't do. Write out three things that happened to you but you responded poorly. And then write three things that you can start doing right now to take back responsibility for the outcomes of your life. Um, and then finally, start your tracking journal. Start tracking at least one behavior in one area of your life that you'd like to change and improve, i.e. money, nutrition, fitness, recognizing others, parenting, any area. Just choose one. Do it for a week. You know, don't, don't get overwhelmed. Do it for a week. And, um, and then review your results. Um, the promise from the book is that once you see how aware you are of the decisions that you're making, that you'll kind of stop sleepwalking through decisions. Um, we do that sometimes. We just kind of go, okay, yeah, whatever's easiest. Um, and unfortunately, whatever's easiest is not, does not generally get us to a point of great and huge success. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for you this evening. Um, upcoming is, uh, oh, let's see, this coming Wednesday at 7.30 Central Time, uh, there's an opportunity meeting with Richard Vance, who's a wonderful presenter. I, I love listening to him. On Saturday, there's a basic training at 8.30 a.m. Pacific um, to be hosted by Katie Moore and Jessica Slating Rice. Um, and also on, so far as I know, <laughs> July 31st and August 1st, we're still hoping for it. Um, I'm, we're planning for it is the Relive Live in St. Louis. And um, the reduced tickets are still available through April 30th. I believe they're $50. And that's what I have for you this evening. You did a great job, Diane. I know that some part of that was really hard, but it was really a good training. Thank you. Thank you.